Tonight, Netflix says never to offline viewing. Former Hulu boss shows off his new web video service. And Sony Pictures caves to hackers. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 237 for Wednesday, December 17th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Netflix is saying no. To offline viewing. So basically the company is saying that offline viewing isn't ever going to happen. Ever. Cliff Edwards, director of corporate communications, called offline downloads a quote, short-term fix for a bigger problem in an interview with Tech Radar, explaining it's more important to focus on improving the availability and the quality and pricing of Wi-Fi access from anywhere, which of course is how Netflix works. Edwards also predicts that offline viewing would be the thing of the past in just up to five years time as broadband access gets more ubiquitous. On the flip side, Netflix competitor Amazon already offers offline viewing with its Prime Instant Video service. Michael Paul, who is vice president of Amazon Digital Video, says, quote, We want our customers to be able to watch their digital videos on all devices, anywhere they are. Offline viewing is already available on Fire tablets and will continue to roll out this functionality to other devices in the future. Former Hulu head honcho Jason Killar has launched a preview of, its, of his new web video service called Vessel, which aims to compete with YouTube by luring away some of YouTube's biggest stars. Today's launch is an open invitation to recruit some of those popular video makers who are the only people who can use Vessel, at least for now. The company is currently signing up YouTube stars to deals that give Vessel an exclusive three-day window to their videos and plans to charge subscribers $3 a month to watch all of them. Hilar says that putting ads in his subscription service will help video makers make enough money to create more compelling projects. Video makers will also be able to keep 70% of the ad revenue associated with their clips. Now, currently on YouTube, those same owners can only keep 55% of the ad revenue that their work creates. Kilar says his service will allow stars to keep more than $50 for every 1,000 views that their videos generate. On YouTube, that number is closer to $2 per 1,000 views. Vessel is set to open to the public early next year. But I hear it's lovely. So Snapchat is all about ephemeral messaging. But thanks to the Sony hack, secret Snapchat company plans are anything but. Leaked emails have uncovered several acquisitions that were made by Snapchat, as well as plans for a music feature and even meetings to discuss partnerships with Twitter. Based on emails between Snapchat and Sony Entertainment CEO Michael Linton and Snapchat board member Mitch Lasky, Snapchat quietly bought a QR scanning startup called Scan.me, acquired eyeglass, eyeglass video camera maker Virgin's Labs, and even details on its acquisition of AdLive was revealed. That's the startup that Snapchat bought to power its real-time video chat feature. So a lot of stuff no longer under wraps. Emails also detail how Snapchat negotiated with Vivo for a feature to bring music video viewing inside Snapchat in August, but then stalled over revenue sharing numbers on advertising. You know, Snapchat isn't the only company that's sort of crying over this whole Sony leak that's really wreaked havoc on all of the internet. Let's talk about who else is having a bad day? To join me with that is Roberto Baldwin, reporter for The Next Web. Hello, Roberto. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm happy that I don't work at Sony today. Uh, so uh, the, the internet kind of had a meltdown. I woke up this morning uh, amidst a lot of chatter about how uh, large theaters, AMC, for example, theater chains across the U.S., had decided to pull the movie The Interview from its uh, premiere date, which was Christmas Day, what happened? Well, the, the the hackers put out a uh, a threat, and it wasn't a veiled threat. They were they they they, they talked about nine eleven. They talked about if you lived in houses near theaters that showed the movie, you better leave. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's you know, it, and and these are hackers. This is not a a known terrorist group. It's it's hackers and Sony. They, they pulled all, you know, Seth Rogen and James Franco no longer did interviews for the movie. And then these five major uh, movie chains decided 
to uh, pull the movie from their theaters on Christmas Day. And then Sony finally decided just to pull the, the movie uh, premiering on Christmas Day altogether. Uh, which is a horrible precedent. You know, when I first heard that Seth Rogen and James Franco weren't going to be doing press interviews, press junkets, very, very common with movies that are coming out, I thought, you know, this could almost add to some of the publicity and end up in Sony's favor because there's just so much chatter around the fact that they're not allowed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But why do you think the big movie houses decided, some of them anyway decided, we're not going to be part of this? You know, there's... There's the Batman story from a couple of years ago, or maybe that was last year now. I don't even really remember. But that was, you know, there are actual incidents that people might be able to recall that would say, listen, even if it's the threat that's never going to happen, we don't want to go to this movie. I guess the movie theaters think, why, you know, why have a movie that won't get uh, tickets sold? Yeah, I mean, there's a fear of, you know, what's going to happen uh, if you go and see the movie. But also the theaters that think about if they have the movie playing at their theater, uh, ticket holders might, you know, customer potential customers might not go to that theater to see another movie just because that theater has that movie. Um, so, it ha you know, it kind of reverberates throughout the whole theater. If, if one, you know, if one room is showing the interview, you know, the rest of the theater in, in could potentially be in, in danger, but I like I, I the precedent set by this is 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 scary because Sony has its fingers a lot of things. It has fingers in music. It has fingers in video games. It has television. Um, what's to say that GOP decides? Okay, well, we don't like this new game that you're coming out with, or we don't like this artist. So we're going to keep releasing information or we're going to, you know, make more of these threats until you either, A, don't sign this artist or cancel making this game or cancel this TV show. Uh, the, the precedent set by this is, is, is scary. So there has been some news in the last couple hours that the U.S. has linked North Korea with this Sony hack that was previously thought to possibly be the case. There are quite a few links between information or, or, or depicting information in this movie and 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 North Korea not liking it what's the latest uh, you know right now the uh, you know everyone has sources within the intelligence community that says that tomorrow uh, the United States will talk about the uh, link between the hack and North Korea which if there is a link uh, that's it's you know it's going to have huge consequences, especially on diplomatic relations between the two countries. Um, and also, North Korea has been very uh, vocal, saying that they didn't do it. And this is a country that loves uh, boasting about anything it does. I mean, they still have you know they still believe in unicorns. So it's mm -hmm. it's you know I I can't see where they wouldn't boast about this, but you know maybe it, this is. Sort of maybe it maybe got out of hand for them, and and you know you really have to think about, um, you know the link between the interview and the hack, uh, you know that was floated by my source on the first, I, you know I had some sources inside of Sony, and that was floated on the first day of the hack, uh, but they didn't have anything concrete, and either a it's North Korea or b uh, GOP uh, saw you know Rico did a story about the uh, the link, and maybe they just ran with it. And when you say GOP, you're talking about the Guardians of Peace. I know. I, 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 <laughs> and that's, an, that's another issue. With, with just, this, I can just imagine someone listening saying the liberal bias of this show is just... <laughs> this lamestream media. No, the, 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 these hackers didn't even have the foresight to think about the SEO of the name. <laughs> because right now it's still down. You, you look up GOP, it's still the grand old party, the Republican right. Party. That's, I mean, come on. All right, so Sony is not releasing the movie The Interview on December 25th, which was the previous release date. Perhaps it, it may, you know, the, a lot can happen between now and a week from today. Mm. If, if they decide, okay, the theaters, this is not a safe place, we have to take threats seriously, and I can, I can definitely see that version of the argument, what do you think they should do with this movie? At this point, you know, it's been it's been leaked onto the internet. You know, is it, is it just going to be torrent heaven? Could Sony do something creative and still get money by releasing it as a web video? Yeah, I think, that, you know, they could really partner with you know, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon. I mean, the, the windowing contracts for this movie are probably all, they're, they're worthless at this point because the movie's not being released uh, when it was supposed to. So if they could renegotiate those contracts about windowing uh, so it, it's available for video on demand on the day it was supposed to be released, I mean, that's that's kind of a win for Sony because it, it's, it's gotten so much press because of this hack. And 
a lot of people are going to watch it just because of this hack. I mean, maybe before there, you know, you had your Seth Rogen fans and, you know, something light and goofy for the holidays. But now a lot of people, you know, they know more about this movie because of this hack. So it's, you know, if Sony's smart, they're, they're already negotiating with, you know, these video on demand uh, companies. Before I let you go, Roberto, I just want to ask, you know, with the Sony leak, it's been very catastrophic as far as Sony information that it really thought was going to be under wraps. Whether or not its security systems were, were up to par is, you know, it's, it sounds like they weren't. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the way that we all can communicate going forward when really no large company is safe. I mean, Snapchat even, I mentioned, Snapchat is yeah. like, great, now all our acquisitions, everybody knows about them, even though mm -hmm. we tried to keep them a secret because of Sony, because it's just, mm -hmm. you know, the communication uh, is, is, is so vast. Uh, if something, if someone wants to hack something, if you're targeted, if someone has enough, if those people, the hackers have enough resources, whether it's state sponsored or individuals, um, there's a good chance they're gonna get to you. So, you know, you have to be a little bit more, you should be careful with your, you know, corporate uh, correspondence just because of, you know, legal issues and that sort of thing. Um, at the same time, we need a better way of communicating. We need a, a smarter way of securing our stuff, whether that's hardware keys, everything's encrypted. Uh, so, you know, if it's on a server, it's encrypted as a, you know, as opposed to being on your, on your computer where you can actually see it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of security implement uh, ways that you can secure these things that you know, corporations really need to start thinking about it. And, you know, startups need to start thinking about this as well. I mean, Snapchat being angry about their stuff being leaked is kind of funny. Evan because... Spiegel said he wanted to cry all day. I mean, he's very well, upset about it. Well, I'm sure all the people whose, uh, you know, images and stuff were leaked and, and passwords and names were leaked for Snapchat probably wanted to cry as well. So... Ah, yes. And, and, and perhaps Sony will be the most secure company to deal with going forward because of all of this. Maybe not, but maybe. I I would hope so. I mean, it should be a big wake-up call, not just for Sony, but for sure. all of corporate America. I exactly. mean, the, the, the target hacks, I mean, all these ways of getting into your system. And it sounds like there's someone on the inside uh, who helped these hackers. But, you know, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of flaws in our current system security wise and they, they really need to be patched and if this is how corporate America or even, you know, down to the startups, this is the wake up call, then um, you know, I guess some good came out of this, but not, you know. Or at least we are all more aware of, of of what can be read next time yeah. we send an email. I don't send emails at or all. Snapchat. Well, no, I'm, I, <laughs> it's all carrier pigeon for me. Got to stay safe. Roberto Baldwin reports for The Next Web. We always love having him on TN2. Thanks for joining us. And before we let you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. You can keep up with me on thenextweb.com. And I am on Twitter, Strange Ways with No Vowels. It's uh, right there. One day I'm going to figure out where to point. Other, other side. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. Oh, yep, it's hard to go back. Yeah, yep. There we go. Yep, mirror image. Always tough. Always tough for me, too. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. Coming up, how Twitter and Foursquare are working together to find out where you are. And now Uber is planning to use biometrics on drivers. We'll tell you why. But first, if you are hiring... Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? With ZipRecruiter, who's sponsoring this episode of TN2, you can post to 50, over 50 even, job sites all at once. Posting the job is obviously a very important part of the process, but once the job is out there, you've got to filter through all the responses you receive and narrow it down and find the best candidate or candidates. And that can be sort of an excruciating process if you're handling a lot of phone calls and emails and, and, and looking through all these resumes. At ZipRecruiter, what you can do is view and download and print and share resumes with your colleagues. You can screen candidates really easily by asking real world questions, quickly identify and be able to filter out the qualified candidates from people who aren't right for the job. You can post just once and then watch all those candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. Quickly screen candidates, you can rate them. Again, you can share with the people who might be on your hiring team and you can hire the right person much more quickly than if you were juggling a bunch of different job boards and having to get back to a bunch of people all the time. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. That's a lot of happy businesses who have used ZipRecruiter to make their hiring process easier. Right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2.
N2. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. On to a few more stories that we're following on TN2 today. Twitter wants to take location to the next level and start surfacing information for users that's location relevant, not just real time. That's at least according to a source talking to Business Insider. The source says that Twitter and Foursquare are planning to partner together in 2015 to power location in tweets, and the geo-based features could roll out as soon as Q1. Twitter recently hired a geo executive away from Foursquare, David Blackman, and it has six other geo engineers job listings on its website. So that at least points to interest. Twitter can currently tell where a user is when that user first signs up for Twitter, as well as the location a user lists in their bio, of course. And users can opt into location information in their tweets using a variety of mobile apps. A Twitter spokesperson declined to acknowledge that there was an official partnership with Foursquare or an impending one, but did say location was a vehicle of discovery for the company. A Foursquare spokesperson also declined to comment on the partnership. Dish announced today that its satellite TV service can now access Netflix from a second-generation Hopper set-top box. Until now, Netflix users have had to switch to another input on their TV or use another device to access the service via Dish. Netflix has made pay TV partnerships a major strategic goal for 2015, been very public about that. And the Dish partnership is another step in its goal to achieve the kind of reach a network like, say, HBO has. Not that Netflix pays much attention to HBO or anything. Uber is serious about improving its reputation during a bit of a PR nightmare recently. The ride-sharing company's new head of global safety, Philip Cardenas, says that Uber is exploring numerous technologies for verifying drivers, like biometrics, voice fingerprinting, even lie detector tests. As Cardenas explains it, quote, scientific analysis and technology should help make up for gaps in background check infrastructure around the world. Uber is also developing an emergency system, it says, will let you quickly reach your family or Uber itself if you feel you're at risk during a ride, and is also improving its response network to provide immediate support if needed during a ride. Finally, how cool is your neighborhood Christmas light show? Maybe it's pretty cool. Maybe it's not cool at all. I don't even have one. Nobody in my neighborhood does anything. But probably nobody's is as cool as this one set to themes from Star Wars. This is posted by YouTube user and music teacher Tom Bet George, who lives in Newark, California, not too far from Petaluma, actually. The display features big illuminated instruments and... I don't know, man. That's pretty darn impressive. Overall, the show requires uh, around 100,000 lights that run through 12,400 channels. And you would think that his neighbors would hate that. But according to the description on the YouTube video, Bet George uses the display to raise money for the poor and homeless so it keeps his neighbors happy. Oh, man. That is good stuff. I could watch that all day. But we don't have time. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss our morning news program. That's every Monday through Friday. Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.